This is a short video on Vasa Previa. This is a condition where the fetal vessels are unprotected in the membranes near the internal os of the cervix, which can lead to them being damaged and bleeding. I'll briefly talk about the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of Vasa Previa. As in all of these flowcharts, each of the boxes is color-coded according to this legend in the top right. Let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, Vasa Previa is when the fetal vessels are unprotected in the membranes near the internal os of the cervix. Now there are two big ways that this can happen. You can have a multi-lobed placenta. This is when you have an accessory lobe separate from the main placenta. And in this case, the vessels are connecting the two lobes of the placenta and the vessels are exposed, supporting only by the amnionic and the chorionic membrane. So you could see this part of the placenta here and the main part of the placenta here, and there are vessels connecting them, exposing those vessels to the cervix, the internal os right here. The other way that you can have vasa previa is with a velamentous cord insertion. This is when the placenta is all in one piece, but you have abnormal insertion of the umbilical cord into the amniotic membranes, and the vessels travel here without Wharton jelly. Now remember that Wharton jelly is usually what pr provides that protective coat over the umbilical cord, and that's lacking in this case with this abnormal insertion into the placenta. Now it's worth talking about the risk factors for vasa previa. The ones specific to multilobed placenta include advanced maternal age and in vitro fertilization. There are some other risk factors that are just general to vasa previa. Those include having placenta previa, having a low-lying placenta, and having multi-parity, having more than one baby um, in the past. So this being your second, third, fourth baby. Now let's talk about the manifestations of vasa previa. It most commonly presents with either nothing or with sudden painless vaginal bleeding. This vaginal bleeding usually happens with a rupture of membranes where you have increased pressure. For instance, baby's head pushing against the vessels here might cause them to bleed. And it's worth remembering that this is fetal blood. This is baby's blood, not mom's blood. So what's gonna happen is that baby might be in distress in more severe cases. So you, this can show up as bradycardia, baby's heart rate can drop. Baby can have abnormal heart rhythms with decelerations or a sinusoidal pattern on the fetal heart tracing. What's going on here is that <clears throat> the fetal vessels are being compressed. So this is why rupture of membranes kind of makes it worse. When you rupture the membranes, you're losing this fluid that's kind of um, cushioning baby's uh, vessels from, uh, from sorry, baby's, baby's head from baby's vessels. And when you lose that fluid during rupture of membranes, baby's going to start pushing down and you're going to start to have contractions during labor. So as the fetal vessels are further compressed during labor, that can make things worse. That can further worsen the fetal distress, but it can also lead to exsanguination and, asphyx and asphyxiation of the baby. So exsanguination, of course, is losing blood, so that can increase the painless vaginal bleeding. Again, it's painless because it's fetal blood, not mother's blood. And it can also cause anemia in the newborn. So baby can be born pale. In very severe cases, this can lead to fetal death. So that's why it's important to identify and treat vasa previa if possible. Speaking of identification, the main way that you can see this is with ultrasound. So you could do transabdominal or transvaginal ultrasound, where you'll see fetal vessels overlying the internal os. If you also have colored Doppler, you might see decreased blood flow within the fetal vessels. And that would be an indication that they're being compressed right around here, compressed so much that you're not able to pass blood through those exposed fetal vessels. And I mentioned management briefly. In general, the um, short of it is that you want to do an emergency C-section if there are significant signs of fetal distress. So if you're noticing that the fetal vessels are being compressed during labor and you have some pretty bad bradycardia, decelerations, or sinusoidal heart tracings, you go ahead and do an emergency C-section. You don't risk doing a vaginal delivery in this case. That's it for Vasa Previa, and thank you for listening.